Hey, what's up everybody? Rod J back in the house and I'm out actually out here at Mad Tree with Michael Stewart. And we are going to talk about some of their beers, including their gold winning, happy amber, and now gold wearing Rod J. <laughs> so appreciate you guys checking out the video. And Mike, go to give me your title again, because uh, last time I came out to shoot a video, you guys didn't get to see it, so. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I got a fun title. It's the Director of People and Social Strategy, which is just a really fancy way of saying I get to talk about awesome beer all day long and get paid for it. There you go. So, so that's a nice little title to put on a resume <laughs> for sure. Sure. Um, so Mad Tree's been doing their thing for a while now. We're at the 2.0 location, essentially, which has been doing great. Uh, you got the the beers, you got the pizza with the catch a fire out here mm -hmm. and stuff like that. But and get it into talking about some of the beer. We'll talk about Happy Amber here, and then we'll get into some other stuff. So this was the one that actually won this year out at Great American Beer Fest. And one of the questions I had asked you, and it came up with someone else had asked me as well, like. It won in the ESB category, right? Which is right. like extra special bitter, or yep. some people say extra strong bitter. Yep. But um, explain how that actually got put into the category. Yeah. So judging beers is kind of a weird thing. Um, it is all very subjective first by the judges and what they taste and what they think fits within the standards or not. So we had actually entered Happy Amber before in the Amber Ale category. It went very far, advanced to second rounds, but the comments we got back from the judges were, it's too bitter for an amber ale. So when you're judging a true style, mm -hmm. it is not as sweet and a little bit more bitter and more hoppy than your traditional amber ale. So we said, all right, let's go back and look at the parameters for all the different style guidelines and figure out where do we think this beer will sit? Because it's obviously doing well. It's gotten very high remarks, uh, high marks on all the judging, mm -hmm. but it's just not in the right place. So. Similar story, June, which is our gin barrel aged Kolsch. Yeah. We've entered that a number of times. We all think it's a delicious beer. We've had great feedback on I it. Agree. Uh, but we've entered it in the wooden barrel aged category. We've gotten feedback, hey, this is great. It's barrel aged, but it belongs in the urban spice category because of the ginger and the juniper. So next year we enter it in the, uh, the, the urban spice category. Yeah. And they say, hey, this is great, but this belongs in the barrel aged category. <laughs> so it's just like, well, shit, what are we supposed to do? Yeah. So, uh, so that's part of the game you play. You figure out where the beers really need to live. Yeah. Um, so in that case, we said, all right, we're going to stop sending June because nobody knows where it really lives. And we just love it. It's a great beer and it can live on its own. Yeah. Uh, but this time we had done well and we knew that basically we were Hitting on almost all the points, but just not the right style category. So that's how we ended up in uh, ESB. And so a number of other beers we've done that, we've kind of moved around from different styles to right. see exactly where it lands. And we get feedback after the judging and learn kind of where where do things really live? Where's their appropriate home to bring home a medal? Yeah, so it was really exciting for us to win for Happy Amber just because this is one of the very original beers. So uh, our co-founders uh, brewed this beer in their basement about a mile from where we're sitting right now. Uh, probably almost eight years ago uh, and so they went through this beer and kind of did the matchery way so they would brew it take notes of everything figure out what that profile was make a small tweak to either the hop or the bill hop bill or the malt profile whatever mm -hmm. and make small tweaks along the way uh, to keep working on it so this probably had 30 plus recipe iterations before it finally became what we called batch one which was the very first beer that got brewed on this system over at 1.0 back in january of 2013. wow so that was that was batch one which was a 12 plus hour brew day of them all kind of running around like crazy did it turn out exactly like happy amber so that's why i got the name batch one it was a good beer but yeah. it wasn't quite to this so as they dialed it in over time it became happy amber so Really cool to win for a beer that has been so so long, so brewed for so long, and has kind of a history behind it, and is honestly just a damn good beer that you can drink. And you know, we always call it our food beer. Uh, it pretty much pairs with any damn food you throw at it. So yeah. whether it's burgers or pizza or whatever, it just has that nice strong malt bill. It is overwhelming. A little bit of bitterness there from the hops. A little bit of citrus uh, flavor coming through to kind of wash it all down. Yeah, uh, it's a solid ABV sitting at over six percent, and uh, it's it's just kind of a just a solid beer. Yeah, so I love yeah. I love reaching for it. Grab is probably my my first beer I fell in love with with Mad Tree a long time ago. Um, mm -hmm. So being able to win a medal for that was just really special, rather than just like oh that's cool one off recipe recreated or something like that. Yeah. So well, in the picture, it's got like the the tree art, which is always <laughs> good. I don't know who does the artwork for the can, but it was always pretty cool how they do the artwork. Yep. And I used to look at it like, you know, you see the face and everything so, like that. So whose face do you see in there? We got a, we got a lot of different answers uh, from that. Some people see, think they see like celebrities in there. I see like, it's like a big nose. I'm trying to think. So some of the names of it is a uh, Robert De Niro. 
Uh, some people see that, or John Goodman are, are some names that have been thrown out there as far as John Goodman people actually is not too Kind of see that kind of smirking John John Goodman uh, face in there. Michael Palin. Yeah. yeah. I see the nose, and I think back to like nineteen. I don't know when I was a kid, my mom used to watch stuff and like old black and white. There was like an actor. It wasn't like Sid Caesar or something, was it? It was somebody. He had like a big nose, and he used to wear like the little like the black hat and everything, and it kind of just like. I see, like, him in it. Like, he yeah. was old, like, back with, like, Fred Astaire type movies right. and everything, so. Yeah, that's kind of the cool thing about the artwork is everybody kind of sees what they want to see in it, which yeah. is all a part of the fun. But I used to think of it as, like, an oak tree, right? Yeah. So now, instead of it being an oak tree, because it's the older in the beginning, it's the OG. Yeah. It's the OG. OG. It's the old Absolutely. man pitcher yep. on the oak tree. We'll call yep. it the, o- the OG yeah. beer. OG beer. Happy yeah, Amber. Absolutely. There we go. Yeah. Side note, June belongs in my belly. <laughs> June is a good beer. So <laughs> if you're in the Cincinnati area, check out June. And to us, uh, that other people that watch the channel, I say us, including like in Ohio or mm-hmm. in the Kentucky area, yep. you know, we're fortunate to actually get it. But I have a lot of people that I've watched so that are up in northern Ohio that are now getting the Cincinnati beers too. Yep. And of course, Mad Tree, we have here, we have Columbus, Cleveland too, right? We are the entire state of Ohio, right. all of Kentucky, and about uh, Nashville and east. We just kind of draw a line down the state. So okay. Tennessee. So about 70% of the state of Tennessee. Nice, nice. So future distribution plans right now? Hopefully none, because it's been a little bit crazy yeah. uh, opening up all these new markets. <laughs> I think we're going to take a little break in 2019, kind of get our feet underneath us, and then we'll kind of look at that in the future. Um, obviously, we, we've always wanted to be the most respected brewery in the region, meaning yeah. kind of the general Midwest area here and kind of states that touch Ohio. So that's kind of where we have our eyes on looking at it in the future, but we'll kind of see where things go. Yeah, and I think like overall, you know, my impression on Madtree, it is one of the breweries that I would say in the area that you can go to and pretty much find anything to drink for any type of palate. Yep. It's not a straight like IPA, it's not a straight sour, it's not a straight you know, barrel type. It's got everything that you can kind of yep. Go through, and you guys run like what twenty plus taps? We think. have thirty-two taps Three. smeared inside and out. One's got a non-alcoholic soda, and the rest are all open for beer. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, need a driver. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you can always find something here, and then mm-hmm. the, the food is also pretty good with the pizza that you have in here now. Um, as far as like some of the other stuff upcoming with other things that you're doing with the beers, other things yep. you're looking at, like Mad Tree doesn't really come across as kind of the beer chasing brewery you know what right. i mean so you right. guys have done well establishing yourself and going through things but yep. are there certain styles you're seeing out there now for instance last year right everybody's chasing new england ipa yep this year is starting to turn where people are starting to go after brute ipa oh yeah so what do you guys kind of see when you're looking out there is it kind of like we still want to blaze our own trail or are you kind of starting to maybe pick up from what other people are feeling out there yeah i mean i'll say we'll never be a hype brewery we're not going to make beers just because it's the flavor of the week uh but we are going to be very intentional and thoughtful about the beers we want to create and we do not have any limits to creativity or style so uh we're actually working on some pretty cool stuff uh to give our brewers a little bit more freedom so right now essentially our our pilot system which is kind of crazy to say it's a 15 barrel system which is our pilot kind of research system which is most breweries probably main production system uh they have a lot of freedom about what they can produce because we're generally producing stuff for the tap room Um, and so it's kind of our r d process is to run it through the tap room see how it does does it fit Uh, but one of the things we're working towards next year is really allowing the brewers just complete freedom from start to finish to creating the recipe all the way to designing a can label and marketing and name and everything. Yes. Yeah, cool. uh, we're going to let them kind of do a monthly series to where they will be packaging small amounts of beer that will only be available in the tap room uh, to where they can, they, they have a blank check and their imagination is the limit and let's just go and see what they can come up with and create with. So there's really kind of a pushback. They're like, Hey, you guys like stop telling us what to make and, uh, mm-hmm. from a marketing angle right. like we're we're brewers we're craftsmen we're we're artisans let us do our thing and we're like cool you're right let's do it let's put your money where your mouth is and let's see what you can come up with and i think it's gonna be awesome actually nice really really excited to see what they come up with uh so it's already they've already kicked a lot we're kicked around a lot of really cool ideas for some different beers one of them being a brute rose ipa oh uh, we've actually got one Kind of an early version of that in the uh, fermenters, or it's going to be brewed here any day now. Uh, they'll be ready here pretty soon that they've been playing around with. So yeah. we'll see how that goes. If it goes well, it could uh, end up in one of these cans. <laughs> oh, could be coming to a can or anything. Exactly. Yeah. So, so I'm trying to think, do you guys have a hazy IPA? Did you guys uh, ever? 
So we have what we like to call an unfiltered double dry hopped IPA. Okay. Uh, which happens to be uh, very hazy in nature. Yeah. Uh, a little flaked oat. So yes, there's plenty of that in it. So we've been doing this year kind of a quarterly uh, sensorium series where we release two 16 ounce cans, one being a We'll just call it hazy IPA, and the other being a Berliner Weiss, uh, with using similar flavor and color profiles and things, so they kind of match each other. Right. Uh, so we're doing it every quarter. So we did uh, uh, two of those uh, so far. We got a third one here coming up pretty soon. So yeah, we've been playing around with that as well as some experimental stuff here in the tap room, some nice. different kind of hazy things. Uh, it's not going to be our bread and butter. We're not going to start churning out a can every week. Right. Uh, but we definitely appreciate the style and like playing with it. So yeah. yeah. Well, you guys always tend to have. Um, a pretty good tap room going, I would say, from some of the breweries I visit out there, you know, you guys definitely, every time I come in here, it's not like there's a lot of empty seats. I mean, right. you know, you come in, depending on certain times, yep. you can get around a little bit more, but you guys always seem to have a good crowd coming through, so that definitely shows the good stuff you're putting out here. Yeah, no, we're very fortunate to get so much support from the community, and uh, we try to be generous and give back to them and uh, support them and keep a wide variety of beers on and continue to push envelopes and boundaries and keep experimenting and keep kind of seeing what kind of creative things you can come up with. Yeah, yeah, the beer definitely uh, guides the people in, but... Uh, you know, we had just done, I just done the press release that you sent to me as well mm -hmm. about the uh, the Lyft program so yeah. for October. So what's going on? Yeah, so uh, we kind of connected with Lyft and said, you know, how can we help people come to the tap room but still make it home safe? Because sometimes you have a little bit too much fun here. Yeah. And uh, so let's come up with a kind of a cool way. So we said, all right, let's just pilot a program. So we're just kind of in early stages of them. It says, if you take a Lyft ride here, the ride sharing service, uh, and then show it to your show your receipt to the bartender we'll give you half off your ride home mm -hmm. uh so that will hopefully give people a little bit of impetus to one take some cars off the road yeah uh, we don't need all the extra carbon monoxide and other things like that going on out <laughs> you there. guys have never joined to cincinnati you, you, you're <laughs> missing a good time there <laughs> yeah 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 it's a little bit crazy so it's like all right let's kind of get people here and then get them home in one piece as well yeah. and uh so so yeah we're, we're doing this during the month of october to kind of see where it goes and we've had some discussions about where we can kind of take this and then of course we have a beer named lyft they have a car service named lyft it's kind of seems kind like of an easy right match yeah. i mean most of the time people spell our name wrong or they probably spell their name wrong so you yeah know, whatever let's, <laughs> let's just embrace it and work with each other and, well could you uh, imagine if the color scheme from soul would have been on lyft? oh man you would have been out of it if you haven't seen soul soul's like a pink can so yeah. it really worked out well um and speaking here in october mm -hmm. unless i'm mistaken Really not an Oktoberfest. I mean, we have Pilgrim, which is like the fall beer. Kind yep. of heading into Thanksgiving. But you guys are already doing Marzen, do you? So we do have one that's a, a taproom only draft only called Marzen's Attacks. Okay. Uh, it is a true uh, lager Marzen's, and I'm pretty sure we just ran out of it, and I'm really upset about it because I've been drinking that beer nonstop for about <laughs> three plus weeks. Uh, but, it, it, you know, lagering obviously takes up a lot more tank time, so it's a little bit more challenging for yeah. us to do lagers with some of the volume we're working through. But recently we just added... Two new 30-barrel uh, fermenters to kind of our, our pilot system there. So Excellent. that's going to open up the uh, the doors to do more lagering for us. And so we're pretty excited about being able cool. to do that. Yeah, but Pilgrim is out now. And like, I know with all the stores and stuff like that. Yep. So yep. if you got to grab a six-pack for Thanksgiving dinner, grab yep. a pack of Pilgrim. goes right with the turkey. So, yep. Yep. Um, and then we'll start getting into the later months here. Mm -hmm. So, I'm trying to think, Access Monday comes out when? So, Access Monday, we generally always have on tap here in the tap room. Right. Uh, we'll have coffee, vanilla, Access. I want to say we're going to do that around the first of the year. Okay. So, that's the barrel aged version with coffee, vanilla uh, added, which is phenomenal. Probably, gosh, probably my favorite. Yeah. We make. I mean, it's hard not to drink. Yeah, people that need beer. to mark that in their calendar. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we got Luna Lux, which is out right now. Yeah. That's our white IPA. So that one's uh, really done really well for us. Kind of surprising. Like people that don't like IPAs like it because of the. It's got some white weed in it. Yeah. Uh, it's got the Belgian yeast. So just real soft bitterness. It's not the harsh IPA. Yeah. It's got coriander seed and the hot profile just gives it a real kind of juicy citrusy flavor. Yeah. Uh, easy one to drink. And then. Believe it or not, coming up at the end of the month, Thundersnow will be ready to roll out the Scotch Ale. So that's a, that's a big, good. burly Scotch Ale. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Love that beer. You got to take it easy with it, especially as your first time. Yeah. But, uh, it's delicious. Yeah, Thundersnow is uh, one of my favorites there. It's actually one that you can sell for a bit of time, too. So yep. I usually carry it over. Yep. Because, you know, you don't want to drink it all at once, and then you're like, I'm out of Thundersnow until right. December. <laughs> or next, when the next season comes up, or like November or whatever. Yeah. So it's kind of like... Get them when they come out. I know that I've seen in some of the stores. They, that one does go pretty quickly, yep. I've seen, uh, when that one hits. But the Axis Monday, that one yep. definitely flies. 
Um, we also got our Dorado High, which we actually just released yesterday. So yeah. that's our newest member of the High Series of our Imperial IPAs. So the fun thing about High Series, yeah. yeah so. I mean, I, lo- I love the um, the ones we're talking about, but freaking Galaxy High. Galaxy that's high. probably my favorite one. I'm a Citra High that's person probably, myself. I like Citra High too. I love Galaxy, Galaxy but <laughs> Citra is where I'm at. So, I don't, yeah. yeah. I mean, the cool thing about I love about the High Series is the same base beer, and it's like, all right, well, now let's just play with the hops and kind yeah. of plug those in and out, and you just get such completely different flavor profiles out of it with essentially the same exact beer. So that yeah. was just really kind of fun to experiment and play around with and see what can we pull out of beers just by upping and uh, changing the hop profile. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, we uh, we went out of town one weekend when Citra High came out this past year. Mm-hmm. And before we left to go to town, I went by one of the stores to pick up a six pack of Citra Hot. Yeah. And I was like, "What are you? We're about to go to town. Like, I gotta make sure it's here when I get back." Right. Yeah. Like, I gotta do that. <laughs> the right won't be. So, yeah. <laughs> so definitely always worth yeah. picking up that and everything. Um, as far as some of the other stuff taking place, events coming up. You guys doing some things out here at the brewery? Is there things that? Uh, let me think. What do we have coming up here right now? I don't now? know if you guys like bring anybody like bands or stuff in or do anything like. Uh, so New Year's Eve, we're uh, gonna do some fun stuff here in a tap room. We're actually for the first time gonna shut down the tap room completely to the public and do a ticketed event for that. Oh, uh, we got okay. some bigger bands coming in for that. Uh, we've been talking about Bonanza coming up, so that's our anniversary party. Okay. Uh, I think we're gonna be doing some really, really big, cool, different things, and we're gonna blow this party out even more than our grand opening. When is that gonna probably be? That will be in uh, roughly mid February. Mid February. Uh, that's gonna be a drunk mug. You know, beer fest is that month. I know. I know. <laughs> it's about two weeks before that. Okay. We're already we already already like, uh, <laughs> we gotta go to beer fest, and then we gotta go. We got another event, and then we got our holiday party, and then we've got this Bonanza. So. Our livers are already all screaming. Yes, yeah. but uh, you know, <laughs> plan it doesn't matter. Season, you got to plan so, it out. You got to yeah. plan it out. Yeah, so I, I'm really excited about Bonanza, and it's gonna we're gonna have some uh, some big things this year yeah. for that. So, and you guys will be doing beer fest probably here. Yeah, yeah, we'll be at we'll so beer be fest. We'll be at Cincinnati, Columbus, Cleveland beer fest. Um, yeah, so we end up hitting up all three. So yeah, and for the people that watch, you know, you've seen some of the videos I've done going to some of the beer fests here in Cincinnati, but. The same group that does the Cincinnati Beer Fest, that's Cleveland, New Columbus. They also do mm-hmm. Pittsburgh. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if there's anyone outside of there that are going to kind of like the fourth main city. I don't think they get out to Chicago. I think they go to thing. Philly, if I remember correctly, too. The Maybe same that's group. part of it now. Um, like, yeah. Um, but yeah, so. The, yeah. And, uh, and I th- they might even be doing one in Florida. But, yeah. you know, they're kind of starting to branch out and do all kinds of different yeah. things. So. <laughs> now, are you planning to go up to Dayton for the. Uh, Halloween Ale event? The Halloween, yes. Halloween, yeah, yeah. We'll be there. So that's uh, by the Ohio Craft Brewers Association. That's right. a great event. So absolutely we'll be there as long as along with uh, a lot of great other Ohio breweries, which we had 13 different medal-winning Ohio breweries at GABF this year. So yeah. it'll be a great opportunity. To yeah, it was great a great beers. representation because I saw on the, the stats from the event, which is always kind of weird when you see the stats, like... We have almost 7,000 breweries in the country, right? So you're like, there's a lot of breweries that don't get into the event, oh, yeah. you know, but you're going with what is there, what is that universe? And I think it was like 52% of the winners for West Coast breweries, mm-hmm. which is actually down. So the East Coast mm-hmm. and Midwest are trying to represent more. Yeah. But out of Ohio, 13 breweries, 14 medals. Yeah. It's awesome. It's a nice representation. It's great yeah. to have that kind of selection here. And, We're and very here fortunate. in Cincinnati, like people get kind of blown away when I tell them the figures like here in Cincinnati with so all the different breweries we have yeah. are kind of just in that Cincinnati area not getting yeah. Lexington not getting Louisville, Raleigh, Dayton absolutely. Columbus and all that stuff yeah so, we're up to 40 some odd breweries here in the greater Cincinnati region yeah I don't even know, more I than that it's like 60 them. almost yeah, now yeah. yeah see Mike used to run the website <laughs> but then Mike came to Madtree and so I took over running the website <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe one day I'll get to Madtree <laughs> there you go it's a stepping stone <laughs> stepping stone <laughs> but um which, Mike, you had a great blog and stuff you did. So I always appreciate it when you're doing that. And, of course, you put on hiatus. But, yeah. you know, we try to tell the story of the different Cincinnati beers and all the different breweries and great success with Happy Amber. Yeah. Uh, definitely a great beer that you guys want to check out. I know i got a few of the guys that watch that are kind of north of Dayton and up in the Cleveland area, Akron. Um, so, definitely, if you guys are getting this up there, you definitely want to check this beer out along with the other Mad Tree beers. And, Great, great stuff. Uh, one of uh, one of friends here, and I got my buddy Gary here's going to be off camera, as you can't see, but one of our friends, Donna, she is um, up in northern Ohio, mm-hmm. and it's like every other day we see her post stuff. It's like Cincinnati beer she's posting. <laughs> so Cincinnati, much representation. Definitely appreciate Mike taking some time with us. I got to talk about this beer here, and 
I'm going to go ahead and shut it down. I mean, we could probably go further, but, you know, i got a happy hand. I'll keep talking. Me. I, we, we keep <laughs> talking. We keep drinking. Yeah. <laughs> but um, definitely appreciate the time for everything. And uh, always, like I said, love coming out. Love keeping me in the loop on stuff so we keep posting the things out there. And much success for sure. Thank you. Not all right. Thanks for having me. And we'll catch you guys later because we're going to drink some beer. Keep drinking that good craft beer. Remember, there's always time. gold medal back, too. Oh, <laughs> I'm about to poop in the gold medal. I'm going to poop in the gold medal and take it home. Catch you guys later. Get your beer on. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.